Amen, amen, amen. God bless you guys and happy Thanksgiving. Who's happy to be in the house of the Lord today? All right. Look to your neighbors say happy Thanksgiving, everybody. How about this one? Look to your neighbor and say either you look handsome or you look beautiful today. I know it's, praise God. Praise God. I don't get that. I, I get, uh, you look smart today, but thank you. <laughs> thank you, my, thank you, my queen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen, man. I tell you what, you know, this is Thanksgiving week and I love it. Absolutely love Thanksgiving week for so many reasons. And uh, I was taking my um, granddaughter to school this week and I said, you know, she, I put Christmas music on already. I, I started listening to it early and she's like, already Christmas? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. And then I said, how would you feel if Christmas was all the time? She goes, that would be fantastic, right? Celebrations, music, decorations, presents, family time. She said, that would be fantastic. And I said, you know what? Yeah, it would be. But you know what's also fantastic is Thanksgiving. It really is. Some people want to skip right over Thanksgiving and get to Christmas. Yeah, let's just hurry up. Let's get through Thanksgiving and let's start getting ready for Christmas. But I'm going to tell you, don't do that. Enjoy Thanksgiving because it prepares your heart, your mind, and your soul to celebrate the greatest day in the history of the world, Christmas, the birth of our Lord and Savior. So Thanksgiving is a time to prepare you for the joy of Christmas. Amen? Amen. Thanksgiving, it's a, it's a wonderful time. I don't know if you all have, some may have good memories, some may have bad memories. The other day we were talking about, boy, you know, we were in a small house, and I used to eat with the kids in the bedroom. Doing the tamales on the floor, so, you know, in case you don't know, if you're not Mexican, you have tamales, you know, instead of a turkey. Just kidding. Along with it, okay? It's along with it, all right? It's just a lot of stuff. Somebody put this list out. It said a traditional American uh, Thanksgiving and had like 10 items, and it had a Mexican Thanksgiving had like 400 items on it that you have. I don't know if that's true or not, but anyway. So I just remember these good times, you know, and having fun with my cousins and everything and being in the house, playing football outside. So it's a good time, you know, it's, I'm very thankful, and I enjoy Thanksgiving. I do enjoy the food. I mean, come on now, look, I mean, you can tell. I do enjoy the food, all right? But I love the time of fellowship with our family and our friends. And I hope that after this message today that you also will start enjoying that time. The title for today's message is Enjoy Thanksgiving. Can you enjoy Thanksgiving? Will you enjoy Thanksgiving? It's only four days away, my brothers and sisters. So our first scripture for today, you can go along with me in the screen or in your Bibles, and I encourage you to take notes and write these scriptures down, memorize them, look at them, research them, study them, whatever you need to do. But in Psalm 118.24, it says this, this is the day the Lord has made. Amen? We will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoicing and be glad. It's not silly happy. Being glad and rejoicing is giving thanks to God. And so, obviously, most of the Psalms are written by King David. And you look at his life story, there's a lot of reasons for him to be thankful. Very successful king. He was a man's man. He was a warrior. You know, he was a brave in battle, killed Goliath. He had so many reasons, you know, to be like, to be thankful to God. But if you look at his whole life, you'll see that he had so many more reasons to be down and depressed. A lot of reasons. His own son tried to kill him. His baby died because he committed adultery. Kingdom, he had to be run. He, was, he had to run and hide and on and on and on. People died because of the decisions and sins that he made. But even with all of that, our King David could still be thankful to God. So I know that sometimes, you know, you may have a hard time in life. Maybe this is a hard year. Maybe this is a hard season in your life. But there's still reasons to be thankful. I promise you. And I hope that right now, just for these next few minutes, you stop thinking about all the troubles in the world that you have. Because I know you brought a lot in. But think about the blessings that you have right now. Some of the blessings are the people sitting next to you right now. One blessing is the vehicle you got here in. It may have barely been holding on. Maybe it didn't start right. The tires might have been flat. Maybe you don't have money to put gas in there. But that's a blessing. 
could be the home that you're going to today. Maybe it's not your dream home. Maybe it's dirty. Maybe it's broken. But it's a home. Somebody invited you over for Thanksgiving. Or you're inviting people over for Thanksgiving in a couple days. That's a reason to be thankful. You have clothes. I'm thankful that everybody walked in with clothes today. Maybe you should be thankful. Okay? <laughs> you should definitely be thankful. I did. And so we're going to have a celebration in a little bit. We're going to have some cake later. I'll be thankful for that. Praise God. Who's thankful that it's 40 degrees instead of 140 degrees? <laughs> I'm thankful that this black podium is not too heavy. Thankful that I got the word of God here. Thankful that I got these glasses that I can see. Thankful for these seats that you guys have. And I can keep going on and on and on and on. And when you start getting to a heart of thanks and start of gratitude, then those problems, they just start getting smaller and smaller, and your thanksgiving starts getting bigger and bigger. And when your praise and appreciation and your thanks starts getting bigger and bigger, guess who also gets bigger? Our God gets bigger. You start looking at your problems like David looked at Goliath. Yeah, I know he's 9 foot, 10 foot tall, but I also know that my God is infinitely bigger than him. So when you look at your problems like that, you also can have joy and be thankful. Hey, my God is with me. There's so many reasons to be thankful. You know, I was thinking about the Apostle Paul. I talked about him a lot this year, probably more than I ever have in any year in my sermons. But really, I mean, there's a lot to talk about with the Apostle Paul. But this man was always thankful in his letters. He has 13 letters, 14 if you count Hebrews. Let's just say he has over 12 letters, all right? And he, man, I believe that if Paul was alive today, he would absolutely love Thanksgiving. Because while he was writing these letters, most of the time he was in prison or he was in exile somewhere. He wasn't in a four-star hotel. He wasn't getting served by hand and foot. He wasn't, didn't have servants around him as he wrote these letters. And still in his letters, he would begin them and end them with something like this. May the grace and peace of the Lord be with you. Can you imagine writing? One place that they said in Rome when he was writing those letters in Rome was that he was probably in the lower dungeons and sewer water was probably up to his waist. He was in prison there. And here is where he was writing letters like, May the grace and peace of the Lord be with you. He didn't say anything about, Can somebody give me a plunger? Can somebody come and do this for me? Oh, poor me, it stinks and smells in here. And he didn't do that. Read Paul's letters. He was very thankful. So I believe that, man, if he was here today, he'd probably be running around. He'd be on the parades, you know. He'd be on the blimps and the downtown parades going on. Be on TV telling everybody just how thankful we should be. Because this man didn't have anything. He came from a lot to nothing except Christ. But when you have Christ, you have it all. Amen? And that's why this man was thanksgiving. Paul didn't have three meals. He didn't have a bed to sleep in like we do. And he didn't have loved ones around him like we do. Still, he found ways and reasons to be thankful. Gratitude and joy are two things that describe Paul. He was very grateful for what he had. And he was joyful in it. It spread to other people. And I'm going to tell you, if you have gratitude and joy in your life, it just makes life better. It makes it easier. Anybody want a better and easier life in here? Just me? Yes. Tired of all the problems, health, finances, relationships, jobs, on and on and on. We're tired of all that, right? But a grateful heart, a joyful heart, it makes life so much easier. But it starts with us being thankful. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34, we go back to the life of David a lot as I'm talking today. He says here, um, give thanks to the Lord. He is good. His love endures forever. Can you give thanks to the Lord? About 90 days ago, roughly, actually it was about uh, 85 days ago, roughly, I challenged everybody in here to find reasons to thank God. Does anybody remember that? I said, find something different every day, just whatever it is. And I found myself thanking him that I had socks, that I had body wash, that I had hair to put the shampoo on. Not much. Steve, don't look at me, Steve. <laughs> Went to have uh, lunch with some good friends at Joy's Restaurant, in case I hadn't been over there. I was thankful for that. Thankful for you guys. I mean, I was just started thinking things all along the way, right? Just every day is something a little different. And I challenge you guys for a reason. Because 
it will change your life if you start thanking God for what you have. It really will. It may start off silly. It may start off small. But then you really start changing in your mind and in your heart because you're now having an attitude of gratitude. You start thank God for what He's done. And being thankful just makes everything different. It gives you peace. Man, and I need peace. This is a season of love and joy and peace. And brothers, I need it. Sisters, I need it. And God has been so good. I mean, look around us here. In this, to us as a people and as a nation, we have so many freedoms and liberties that other countries don't have. We can complain about whatever, social injustices, politics, who's in power, who's not. We can complain about inflation and all this stuff, but man, I'm telling you, 2,000 years ago, people didn't have a tenth of what we have today here in this country. Jesus and the disciples didn't walk around in chariots, BMWs, Lexus, Hondas, Chevrolets. They didn't have that stuff. They had their sandals walking around. And the stars were their blankets and the rocks were their pillows is what the Word of God says. And here we are, we got a bed to sleep in. Maybe it's bumpy, maybe it's lumpy. It's not as lumpy and bumpy as rocks, though. And it's warmer than dirt. Reasons to be thankful, right? So in this great country, man, God, you know, really spoils us. So we should praise Him for it. We should thank Him for it. The disciples and Jesus, although they didn't have anything, they still persevered in life. And they still celebrated life together. Their outlook was different. They had a hopeful life. It wasn't a perfect life. If you read the story of the disciples, there were times they argued. There were times they questioned. All of them doubted at certain times. So it wasn't a perfect life. And there were times where they were persecuted while Jesus was alive and even afterwards. And so I wish that I could tell you, you give your life to the Lord, that everything will be better, that everything will be easy. But I can't promise you that because it absolutely will not. The more we walk like Jesus, the more we're going to experience what He experienced. And so we will have heartbreak. We will have disappointment because we're in a broken and fallen world. But the great part is we can still thank God for getting through it. Got through your diseases. You got through the relationship problems. You got through the turmoil, the heartache. You got through all of these things. Yes, and so if you got through that, that's a reason to say, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. To any of you parents in here, if your kids ever go to you and say, man, you're the greatest cook, Mom and Dad. Dad, you're so strong. Mom, you're so pretty. Thank you for, I mean, they're telling you thank you for, I mean, just think about that. Our Father God wants the same thing from us. Be thankful to our Lord. There's so many, so many reasons. I hope that I'm stirring up your mind right now and your heart and reminding you that there are things to be thankful. No matter how you walked in today, you don't have to leave that way. Amen? Amen. All right. In the Bible, if you look at the Bible and you see these problems, these people of faith had so many problems and still remain grateful and enjoyed life, then we can do the same thing. So let's start enjoying life, and let's start now, this holiday season. What I'm hoping is that this week, if, you're, if this has been a hard year for you, a heartbreaking year, then this year you'll start enjoying life, thanking God it'll carry you through Christmas, and it'll carry you through next year and the rest of your life. An attitude of gratitude, brothers and sisters. It starts with praising God. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 13, it says, O oh, our God. We thank you and praise your glorious name. Your glorious name. It's hard sometimes to praise Jesus in, in the middle of your storms. When you don't agree, when you don't understand, when you're, you feel like following him has caused you pain and suffering. It's, it's hard. It's not easy. This walk is not for people who are going to run away and give up easily. We don't understand. We, don't, we just can't understand why we have to go through such hard times. But let me remind you of something. God never promised to answer all of your questions. He never promised to answer all of your prayer requests. He didn't. Because sometimes we have questions about whatever. Sometimes our prayer requests aren't in line with God's Word. So He's never promised to answer all those things. What He promised was to His children that He will go with you through your problems. And He also promised to never leave you and to never forsake you. And if he's promised to get you through your problems, who better is going to get you through than them? Mom and dad won't get you through the problems the way God will. Visa MasterCard won't. Your education won't. Your jobs won't. But God can get you through problems the way no one or nothing else can. And that's reason to give him thanks. Amen? And then he says he'd never leave you or forsake you. 
I don't remember who it was I was speaking to the other day, but we were talking about is in a walk, when you're in your walk as a child, you know, two or three year old, you know, they start walking and grabbing stuff. And usually when they first start walking, mom and dad are holding their hands, right? Holding their hands. But then you start letting them go. You might sit back on the couch and watch them go from table to the corner and all that stuff. You're still watching them. And if they fall, you're going to run and help them pick them up. You might try to stop them from hurting themselves. You're still watching them. Brother and sister, this is what God's doing with us. He is our Father in heaven. So although you may feel like you're alone, He's watching you. He says, I see you. I know you. Okay, go to the left. Go to the right. Oh, let me go help you. Go to the right. This is our Father in heaven. That's a reason to be thankful right there. And when you understand, when you understand this, that how much He loves us, and how great he is, and how that he would never leave us, man, and it can give you more joy in your life. Give you less stress. Be less anxious. And a whole lot less anger. Man, can anybody use that? A whole lot of that, right? Giving thanks to God regularly is an expectation for us Christians. This is why we're reading these scriptures here for us today. We're going to go to Psalm 103 in just a minute. I'm going to read most of that psalm for you. But as a believer in Christ, we're supposed to be giving thanks to Him. Listen, if you're going to witness to somebody about how great God is, and hey, you should come to church with me, but you're just, oh God, my life is terrible. What happened? They canceled my favorite Netflix show. I gained so much weight, I can't close my jacket. Or you're angry about everything. My candidate didn't win. Oh, they took my favorite milkshake out of Chick-fil-A. The boss is terrible. What kind of witness are you? Nobody's going to want that. Nobody's going to want that. Why would they want to come to the Lord if you're like that? They're not going to want to come to the Lord. But if through the midst of your pain and your suffering, then you can give thanks to the Lord, then of course, that's going to get their attention. But Lord, you know, I love that Dr. Pepper milkshake at, Dr. At, at Whataburger, but it's gone. Thank you, Lord. I don't have to put on any more weight. You see, you can be thankful. You can be thankful in all kinds of situations. Being a little silly today? Yes, I want y'all to be joyful when y'all leave here today. Amen? I love God, man, and I believe God likes to have a good time too. So let's do that. When you lift your hands, when you lift your voice, when you give thanks and you serve God in hard times, guess who you're acting like? You're acting like Jesus. You're praising, you're giving thanks, and that brings joy into your life. I want to remind you of a couple of other things that you could thank God for. I talked about the car earlier that may or may not be your favorite car. Maybe it's one that's barely holding on by rubber bands. But do you thank Him for it? Do you thank God for your family? Even though I know some of you are like, man, they're coming over in four days. Not that guy. He's always telling the wrong jokes, the wrong time. He's always so cranky. She's always complaining and gossiping. Oh, not them. <laughs> thank God for them anyway. Do you thank God for your job? Somebody can stand you. They're paying you. So <laughs> okay, so thank God for the job that you have. You can thank God for these things. Have you thanked God for getting home safely ever before? Especially in this city. Well, everybody's ready to kill you and shoot you, it seems like. And then you can pull up to your house and say, I thank God for the home that I have. Man, our God, our Father, He spoils us in so many ways. So don't forget to say thank you to Him. Thanksgiving holiday reminds us of how good and loving God really is. And David experienced it firsthand. Let's go to Psalm 103, verses 1 through 6. I'm going to read all of this here. And listen to this. Just think about yourself for just a moment. He's going to talk about a lot of things right now. So if I haven't stirred up any memories or anything for you to be thankful for, I'm hoping that after I read these next six verses, you'll find at least one thing to be genuinely thankful to God for before you leave here today. Psalm 103, verse 1, it says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise His holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. And may I never forget the good things He does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death 
and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. Wow, there's a lot in those verses there. Praise God and thank you for forgiving you for your sins. The cross is the symbol that he did. He has tender mercy and compassion on you when no one else will or did. He accepts you and loves you and welcomes you with open arms and says, come to me. I know you messed up, but come to me. Let me help you fix it. He does this. He gives you strength when you feel like you don't. He makes you feel young when you feel like you're old. And then he fills your life in verse 5. He says he fills your life with good things. Man, I personally can think of so many reasons to be thankful right now. And I hope that right now you're thinking of many things to be thankful for. When you get to a point in your life when you feel like, okay, I don't need to live anymore, that's hopelessness. That means that you don't believe that tomorrow is going to be any better than today. And that's why people commit suicide, because they've lost hope. But Lamentations chapter 3, it tells us that we remember all of these things. We remember how great God is, but that His mercies, His tender mercies are new every morning. So therefore, I have hope. If you ever get to a point in your life, brothers and sisters, where you don't have any hope, please reach out to somebody. Reach out to your pastor. Reach out to a brother or sister in Christ. Reach out to somebody who loves you to tell you, so they can tell you just how valuable you are, because you are. You don't understand the heartbreak that would, I don't know why I'm talking about this. This is not even part of my message. If anybody's struggling with this right now, I would love to pray for you at some point. But I know that this is a hard season for people. This is a hard time. You've lost loved ones. People are sad. Things have happened. Maybe it's never, none of the Christmases or Thanksgivings have ever gone the way that you want, and so somebody's depressed or thinking about ending it or doing something that they shouldn't. Remember the goodness of God. Seek Him. Fall at His feet if you have to. And remind yourself of the good things that God has done for you. During this time, many people reflect on life, their past, and they reflect on where they are right now. And here's the important thing I want you to take away from this, is how you respond to that time of reflection will determine your future. So if you're so depressed or so angry about whatever happened to you as a child or as a teenager or whatever, if you're so angry about the way life is right now, then that's going to determine your future. And it won't be better, it'll be bitter. And it's just going to be another year. 2023 will just be another year of bitterness, of emptiness, of angriness. But brothers and sisters, I've been there. Coming into the year 2000, my life was like that, personally. And the Lord gave me hope. Tremendous hope. And it changed everything. The way that I see people, the way that I think, the way that I feel about myself. And I'm not where I want to be, and I'm sure I'm not where my family wants me to be, but I promise that this year I'll be closer to what God wants me to be than I was last year. And I thank Him that He's given me another day to breathe, for this heart to beat, for air to be filled in these lungs, for me to walk and for me to talk, read the Word of God, and to share. I will share the Word of God with every last breath that I personally have. And because of Him, I give thanks. What about you? What can you thank God for? As hard as your life may be, as difficult as it is, there's got to be one thing to thank God for. And that's all you need to hold on. The Lord doesn't need a whole lot. He just needs you to crack the door just a little bit and He can look down and say, man, that's my son, that's my daughter. You're right. Just give me a little bit and I'm going to change it a whole lot. That's our God. That's our Savior. That's why we give Him thanks. This is why we come before Him and we show appreciation. America is the first country that had instituted a holiday for Thanksgiving. And it's to give thanks to our God for all that we have. So are you going to do that this year? I believe you can. Sometimes people look at their life and I tell you they get depressed, they get sad. And so they'll ask me a question. They'll ask me and say, well, what do I do? I'm going to talk to you about some of the things you can do. But I want to go to the last scripture. I said it was the other one was the last scripture, but this is actually our last scripture today. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. I want you to remind yourself of God's blessings. Hebrews 13, 15 says, Therefore by him 
Let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. The fruit of our lips. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Why our lips? Go to Genesis chapter 1. First thing G, the, the Lord did, God, he spoke the world into existence. Spoke it. Life. Power. But life. And so with our lips, we share our faith. Or we share our depression. With our faith, we can show love to others. Or we can spread hatred to others. With our lips, we can praise God. Or we can curse Him. And what better place than at family gatherings that you can start showing this and your, the lips, the fruit of your lips be to praise His holy name, to speak joy and blessings. Every holiday, you get these loved ones. Sometimes these people, you might see them one time this year and it's on Thanksgiving. And it's fun, right? It can be fun. But this is a time that you, as believers, can bless these people. Bless your family and show them that the Lord is not just on a Sunday. He's not just a Sunday God, but He's an all-the-time God. And that He has changed you and so that He can change them. It may not feel this way, guys. You know that relative that I was telling you about that annoys and picks and says the bad jokes at the wrong time? We all have them, okay? They're usually the ones that walk in with the Dallas Cowboy hurt chat, uh, shirts and caps, okay? Okay, we all know it. We, we all know it. The one that dis the, the, the relative that disappoints is the one that walks in with the Texans gear, okay? Just just kidding. It's okay, you'll be all right. Watch watch this one. The one that uplifts you is the one that wears the Astros gear. <laughs> so I told you. But you know, you think about those people that, you know, uncle does the wrong jokes, the dirty jokes, the aunt is complaining and all this stuff. They're sharing. This just may be the way that they show gratefulness. Maybe it's the way that they show joy. Jesus loves them just as much as he loves you. Some of them are going to be down. Some of them are going to have drama. Some are going to complain. But listen to what they have. They have a heart of sadness, a heart of loneliness and pain. Do you know what's missing? Jesus is missing. Either Jesus is completely missing or a strong relationship with Jesus is missing. And that's why they're not thankful. So guess what you have the opportunity to do? You have the opportunity. You don't have to convince them who Jesus is. You don't have to say them and lead them into the sinner's prayer, although you can if you want. All you have to do is tell them what the Lord has done in your life. How He's helped you to overcome at least one thing in your life. Because He has at least one thing. There's at least one thing in your life that God has done. So share that. Share that the Lord was born and Christmas we're going to celebrate. Somebody will say, well, He wasn't born on December 25th. That doesn't matter. Nobody knows when he was exactly when he was born. It just matters that we're celebrating it. We're acknowledging it. So he was born, then he died in Easter time for us, for our, for our sins, so that we could be in heaven forever if we just believe. That he's the one that left his Holy Spirit that will transform everything in your mind, in your heart, and in your life, in yours and everybody around you, if you just surrender to him. This is who Jesus Christ is. This is the gospel message. He was born of a virgin, lived for 33 years, died on the cross, ascended into heaven, sent his Holy Spirit so that we could be saved if we just believe. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I said, well, I'm not a preacher. I don't know how to... Man, I didn't say one scripture right there. Can you just share who Jesus is? Share the love that you feel, that he know that he feels for you. Maybe you don't, and maybe you don't love him yet. Maybe you just kind of like him. That's okay. It's okay to tell somebody, man, I'm just trying to figure this out myself. But why don't we figure it out together? Let's go to church together. Why don't we have Bible study together? Let's do this together. See, that's okay, brothers and sisters. It's a journey. When I was talking about the family members that are lonely or in misery, man, nobody wants that. There's not one child that I've ever seen that wants to be miserable. They want to be happy. They want to play and have a good time. But there are things that happen in our life that change everything. Heartbreak, disappointment, pain, suffering, abuse. All of them, one of them, some of them. It doesn't really matter. But all that happens is, see, misery and loneliness happen when you look inside too much. And it's easy for us to look inside because we all do. You live with this body and this mind 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Even your spouse doesn't live with you as much as you live with you. 
So it's easy to look inside of this, but Jesus shows us how to look outside. So let's start looking out. He's giving you that ability to thank others, to thank Him, and to show the love of the Lord. I've been asked, man, how do I get through life? How do I get through this season? Why is life so hard? I say find reasons to be grateful, whatever that takes. I think I mentioned last week that Mike Cortez starts listening to Christmas music in October. He came to preach with you guys before because he had a hard time growing up, so his wife puts it on. I watched Charlie Brown. No Charlie Brown fans here? You know, come on. Everybody who's been here knows that I'm going to talk about Charlie Brown at Christmas time, okay? By the way, I went to go get my hair cut the other day, just one of them. It was this one back here. Is one here. Okay, okay. Corny jokes, corny dad jokes. I'm telling you guys, I should have taken a picture of this guy. He was sitting right there. He was an older guy, and he had a swirl, just like Charlie Brown. He had no hair, and he had that little swirl. I was like, oh, my gosh, the real-life Charlie Brown. I didn't say it. I wanted to say it so bad. Man, I did. Oh, I wanted to take a picture with him say, relax. <laughs> you have no idea how much I love Charlie Brown. But he didn't look like he was that type of, you know, person. Like he, did, he wouldn't have appreciated it. But, man, I did. Anyway. So I look at Charlie Brown, I just laugh. And in case you don't know, Charlie Brown's not on TV this year. Apparently, Apple TV's the only place. And it's not because there's a protest or anything. Although, man, Linus, boy, that boy, I bet you, if he was a real-life character, he grew up to be a preacher, man. Have you ever watched Linus? He's always sharing the Word of God. And I love Linus, man, I'm telling you. But I just laugh, and I feel like a kid again, at least for about 30 minutes. I forget all the craziness of the, the, the husband, the to-do list that Michelle gives me all the time. And don't believe me, boy, that principal comes out. She's cracking them whips. So I forget about that for a second. I forget about all the demands, and I'm just watching Charlie Brown for 30 minutes. So I watched the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. Anybody watch that? I'm almost finished, guys. I'm almost finished. I know we're here for another reason. Just follow along with me for just a minute. So Charlie Brown, he's always down about everything, right? Everything's like the end of the world, right? So he was going to go kick the ball, loose, he moves it over. He doesn't do it. So anyway, they call him on the phone, and they start inviting themselves over to his house. And so he goes up to his sister. He's like, I'm losing control of the whole world. I'm doomed. She said, uh, three guests are coming for Thanksgiving, and I won't even be home. <laughs> He's like, I'm supposed to go to his grandma's house. So Peppermint Patty, his friend, the little girl, she invites herself. She invites Marcy, and she invites Franklin over for Thanksgiving. And she's like, I'm doomed. What am I going to do? What am I gonna... And Sally, his little sister, boy, leave it to siblings. She's like, it's your own fault. You're so wishy-washy. What is the deal with siblings, by the way? They call it out, don't they? They just look at you and say, man, you know you're fat. You know you're talking too much. Why are you doing this? I mean, siblings, boy, they're rough, man. So his, so sibling, his sibling does that. So then Snoopy, you know, he goes out, and I love Snoopy. I had a beagle named Snoopy one time, and if we ever get a dog again, it's going to be another beagle named Snoopy. So Snoopy's out there, boy, and I'm just laughing the whole time. He's cooking, and he's doing everything. Little Woodstock is there, and oh, man, I just love it, man. I'm having a good time. See, that helps me get into a good mood around Thanksgiving time. If I'm feeling bad, I do that. What do you do? Because you have a choice. You could just say, oh, man, this is another year. You just put the covers over your head, put your hoodie on. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to be around nobody. Or find something. Maybe yours is the movie Elf. Great. Maybe you like, maybe, yeah, all right, somebody likes Elf. Maybe you like to go sing. Go sing. Maybe you want to go serve in a soup kitchen. Go serve in a soup kitchen. Maybe you want to go volunteer at a, at a homeless shelter. Go do that. Whatever it takes to be thankful. Whatever it takes to bring joy and a smile to your life, do it. Brothers and sisters, God gave you a mind where you can remember things. Yes, you can remember the bad things, but stop trying to remember the bad things all the time because there's a lot of beautiful things in this world. Yes, praise God. Give a hand clap to the Lord. So I'm going to finish with this. Marcy, little girl, Marcy and Charlie Brown. So Charlie Brown, he made toast, in case you didn't know, pretzels and candy, I think. <laughs> You're not a cook. And Peppermint Patty's like, what the heck is this? What is all this about? So he takes off Charlie Brown. It doesn't take much to break Charlie Brown's spirit, by the way, okay? It don't take much. He walks off. Oh, it's the worst thing ever. Marcy comes up to him. Thanksgiving is more than eating. It's about being thankful for just being together. Wow. I know. I'm telling you, man. Get a lot from Charlie Brown. I didn't know I was going to be a preacher from watching Charlie Brown, but boy, I'm telling you, okay. 
So listen, I'm going to finish up this message here. This is a time for Thanksgiving. We're all ready to fill up our bellies with turkey and dressing. By the way, I just found out the difference between stuffing and dressing. It's exactly the same thing. It depends on if you're north or south in the U.S. Had no idea. You're about to put yams and desserts and mashed potatoes and all kinds of stuff in your belly. But are you ready to fill your heart with God's love and with his joy and laughter? See, because if you fill your heart that way, then it can come out of you at the dinner table. So choose today to give thanks to God during Thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. Let's give a hand clap to the Lord, everybody. All right. We, um, so that's for my Thanksgiving message for today. We're going to do something special today. Uh, we have our DS College graduates who are, gra- are uh, students.